It's a book called Inside the Wire uh, last year. Just a couple more things. In Guantanamo, there was, which is supposed to be ethical, here are, many, here are psychologists now training interrogators how to break people. Uh, and among those, there's a guy who's a high-value high detainee. And somebody leaked out the torture log of this guy. And it's, it's in Time Magazine, I think, uh, last year. And it's for more than 20 days, they did everything conceivable to this guy. Uh, had dogs pee on him, had, had the women uh, try to sexually uh, seduce him. They physically, talk, they did every single thing. A ter Navy Council General Alberto Morris says, a very powerful statement, if cruelty is no longer declared unlawful, but instead is applied as a matter of policy, it alters the fundamental relationship of man to government. The Constitution recognizes that man has an inherent right, and it should be women, not bestowed by the state or, or laws, but to personal dignity. That's the bottom line, is that what happened in Abu Ghraib, what's happening now at Guantanamo, violates personal dignity. Then he goes on to say, including the right to be free of cruelty. It applies to all human beings, not just in America, even those designated as so-called so unlawful enemy combatants. I'm going to deal with that in a minute. If you make this exception, the whole Constitution crumbles. He said, it is a transformative issue for America. And it's not simply we're torturing some people in Guantanamo or not. Some people say it's not abuse, it's torture, it's not torture, it's abuse. He's saying it's a transformative issue. Starting in January 2005, uh, uh, Bush had his legal counsel and a whole set of lawyers, uh, maybe some from, from Harvard Law School, certainly from Stanford, certainly from Berkeley and other places, develop a new concept of what is torture and who are the enemy, who are the victims. And it's called the Torture Memos. And Alberto Gonzalez says, the nature of the new war on terrorism places a high premium on other factors such as the ability to obtain information quickly. Therefore, in my judgment, the new paradigm renders obsolete Geneva's conventions, Geneva's strict limitations on questioning of enemy prisoners. So this starts loosening the, the, the constraints on interrogators, loosening the constraints on the CIA, loosening constraints on, um, uh, on the, the civilian interrogators. In the torture memos, it says torture, the agent must have a specific intent to cause severe physical or mental pain or suffering. Secondly, what is physical pain torture? It has to be equivalent in intensity to the pain accompanying serious physical injury, such as organ failure, impairment of bodily function, or death. If it's not that, it doesn't qualify as torture. Well, what about psychological torture? Psychological torture is, it includes only acts resulting in significant psychological harm of significant duration, lasting for months or years. So as long as you can last it only for a few weeks, then it's okay. Even worse, NYU law professors Karen Greenberg and Joshua Dreidel have a 1,249-page book called The Torture Papers, which I read all of it, and it's documented in my book. And they say, the proverbial road to hell is paved with good intentions. The internal memos collected in this publication demonstrate that the path to purgatory, that is Guantanamo Bay or Abu Ghraib, has been paved with decidedly bad intentions. They go on to say, the message that these memor memoranda convey is unmistakable. These policymakers do not like our system of ju justice with its checks and balances, rights and limits, that they have been sworn to uphold. The antipathy for and distrust of our civilian and military justice system is positively un-American, they say. Legal scholar Anthony Lewis gives one, what, I, what I really love straight from the shoulder thing. The memos read like the advice of a mob lawyer to mafia don and how to skirt the law and stay out of prison. Avoiding prosecution is literally the theme of all these many, many memoranda. And then we come to the Military Commissions Act of 2006. The Military Commissions Act of 2006 is one of the most horrendous documents ever in American history, American legal history. The President of the United States is given broad wartime powers. As long as the war on terrorism is going to go on forever, this is forever, to label anyone as an enemy, uh, unlawful enemy combatant. That includes American citizens picked up anywhere in the world, or certainly foreigners, and they automatically lose all the rights of habeas corpus for civilians 
and the Geneva Convention for Soldiers. They can be imprisoned indefinitely, meaning for the rest of their life, without any charge against them. They can be tried only by military tribunals who may use hearsay evidence obtained without a legal search warrant. And further, it permits many objectionable interrogation tactics that qualify as merely humiliating. So all those pictures you saw in Abu Ghraib don't, don't qualify as torture under the Military Commissions Act and therefore are acceptable. It retroactively protects all government officials, notably CIA operatives, who have been involved in such activities that would be qualified as crimes against humanity. The picture you saw of the guy uh, with a uh, black eye with a bandage over, wrapped in, wrapped in plastic ice, and you have two of the soldiers giving thumbs up. He was killed by Mark Swain, a CIA operative. After the, after the Navy SEALs beat the shit out of him, they brought him to Abu Ghraib, and, and Mark Swain, who was a CIA operative there, had two of the soldiers hang him up on a hook and started interrogating him. An hour later, his, his, it's not clear, his arteries burst, he was, he was dead. So the shit hit the fan, what are they going to do? They're going to pretend that he, he has pneumonia, they're going to wrap him in ice, have medics come in, put an intravenous in his arm, they're going to pretend to take him to the hospital. In fact, it's set up with a taxi driver, is going to take him out, throw him in the woods. It just so happened that taking pictures of all the other shit going on, those two soldiers took a picture of this guy who was a ghost detainee, meaning he's somebody Rumsfeld had authorized, high-value detainees, we're not going to put on the record. We're just going to give him a number, 3572, I forget what his number is, I have, have it in the book. And so here now, our military police are seeing um, CIA getting away, literally away with murder, and then you're implicating now so, uh, 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 physicians and nurses uh, in this thing. Stanford Law Professor Jenny Martinez, a young, brilliant lawyer who actually argued successfully before the Supreme Court, she says the Military Commissions Act is a poison chalice. It, it overthrows 200 years of Anglo-American law, that it, it transforms uh, 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 American law. The New York Times back in 2006 said, it's a tyrannical law that will be ranked with the low points in American democracy, our generation's version of Alien Sedition Act. Yesterday, the Supreme Court of the United States, your Supreme Court, refused to hear appeals from two groups of, of uh, Gitmo detainees, designated enemy combatants, who have been held there for more than five years without a charge. Con and and, and the, the decision uh, was, Congress has passed a malleable statute giving broad discretion, not to us, the Supreme Court, but to an executive agency, Bush, Cheney, et al., no matter how important the underlying issues at stake, this court has no business substituting its own desired outcome for any reasoned judgment of the reasonable authority. This is Judge Justice Scalia, uh, Alito, Roberts, and Scalia's clone, Clarence Thomas. Uh, mindless clone. So I ask the question, where is the outrage? Our constitution is being undercut. Where is the moral outrage? Where is the outrage among law students all over the country? Uh, and the answer is, it's nowhere. 